Before Foxconn came calling, it once was Governor Scott Walker's biggest jobs announcement, a deal to build airplanes here in Wisconsin. How it fell apart, though, is a cautionary tale about future incentive packages. Our political reporter Theo Keith has been following Kestrel Aircraft's story for years. Here's his investigation on where the money went. This is a story of a big jobs deal. 600 jobs is the biggest package we've had of, of pure outright jobs out there. And what went wrong? There is not a deal to make airplanes. A story of broken promises. I got crushed because I naively believed people. That left taxpayers on the hook. This is not a gift. Nearly six years later, it could end in court. We didn't see it coming. It's a story of clipped wings. This is a story of a project that didn't work out. Superior is as far from Foxconn's Racine County site you can go and still be in Wisconsin, but they know about economic development deals too. In January 2012, Governor Scott Walker came here for the largest jobs announcement this area had seen since World War II. Wisconsin was in the airplane business. Kestrel Aircraft had left Maine to build a new six-seat plane in Superior, where unemployment was 8%. They're looking to grow, and we think there's a good prospect to grow in the future. The plant was meant for the Douglas County Fairgrounds. My kids showed cattle here. Mark Liebert, a farmer who's now county board chairman, called the whole thing a dream. We were feeling like um, finally the state um, and us were together on a project. and We were hopeful that it would uh, work out for everybody. Nearly six years after the governor's ceremony, there is no plant here, no 600 jobs. In fact, the fair still uses this property every summer. To do the deal, the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation, WEDC, offered $22 million in tax credits and loans. Local governments kicked in nearly $3 million, plus land at the fairgrounds and another site. The biggest bet came from the Wisconsin Housing and Economic Development Authority, WIDA, pledging up to $90 million in federal tax credits. Hundreds of pages of documents show it fell apart within weeks. Kestrel now has 25 Wisconsin workers, not 600. It hasn't made a payment on the state loans in nearly a year and owes $648,000. The city of Superior is making $300,000 a year payments on the loan it gave to Kestrel. There is a reasonable limit. Jim Payne is the mayor. I think it's fair to say that when you borrow money, you should pay it back. Uh, and, and I think none of the banks in town have any problem saying that to any of the homeowners in town. There were other effects too. The local technical college closed a program that trained people to work on the plane. Dave Crockett was one of the instructors. I feel it was a loss. It was a loss to the state. I think it was a loss to the school for what it could have been here. At Kestrel's headquarters in the old post office building downtown, CEO Alan Klapmeyer explained his side to me. This is a story of integrity. Klapmeyer puts the blame squarely on the state. He says Wisconsin failed to deliver some of the promised cash on time and didn't come through with other allotments at all. The state did not do what it said it would do in the beginning and then blamed us for them not doing what they said they were going to do first. And so for that, I suppose I would broadly put the blame on the governor, on WDC, on WIDA. Signed contracts do reference what Klapmeyer says he was promised. This one says Kestrel shall have received the rights to the money. But WIDA officials say they only promised to help the company pursue it. Some at the agency had doubts early on. In 2012, one warned there was no real way to guarantee an aircraft plant would be realized. The WIDA board chairman called the deal very risky and speculative. Klapmeyer says he needed the total package to move the project forward, and the $16 million that Kestrel did get wasn't enough. Where's the money? Uh, well, by where's the money, I assume what you mean technically is how was the money spent. And the money was spent primarily on salaries of engineers, so it was funding the company to do what we said we would do. Kestrel first missed payments in late 2013. But as it turns out, Wisconsin wasn't done offering money. In April 2014, WEDC wrote a $10,000 grant so Klapmeyer could attend an air trade show in China. He backed away from the offer. Did you ask for the money? No. They, so, they were willing to give it yeah. to you? Um, and you? And you were the one who cut it short. Right? Exactly. 
Nearly six years in, Klapmeyer says he has new hope the Kestrel will take flight. His company is redesigning a different plane that's in production, expecting to shift sales revenue into the Kestrel. Klapmeyer has a small parts facility, and there we saw the Kestrel, at least a mock-up version of it without wings. But none of that is happening in Superior, not even in Wisconsin. In fact, it's happening an hour and a half across the border in Minnesota. Klapmeyer, who sought state assistance in Maine and then Wisconsin, got a one and a half million dollar loan from a northern Minnesota board last year. He hasn't touched the loan, so would he move Kestrel to Minnesota? The thought certainly crosses my mind. This month, WEDC started legal action against Kestrel, but has not gone to court. WEDC declined a comprehensive interview, and its CEO was vague when I asked about his plans. So we'll continue to pursue whatever rights we have to protect the investment that we made. Klapmeyer acknowledges Wisconsin could put him out of business by pursuing the loans in court and says he bet his future on the plane. Will it work? I hope so, because it's, it's my life that's the, on the line here, not the state's. If it doesn't, will the taxpayers get all their money back? Certainly not. It was a big bet for Wisconsin and especially for Superior, and it leaves people like Mark Liebert unsure if they do it again. This is a story of uh, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. This really was the, our chance.